J-Drone here. What's going on, guys? So you got your Sharper Image DX4. You want to go fly it. You uh, go around back and you turn it on and we don't get any lights. That's no good. What do we do? As you can see right here, this little warning only use provided USB cable for charging, which to me, that's uh, right here. That's where you would charge it. That's like, hey, that lets me know there's a proprietary battery in here. How am I going to fly this? Do we throw it away? No, don't throw it away. Get yourself a small screwdriver. We'll try to focus here. Um, and then there's a little screw here. Check this out. I'm going to show you what they don't want you to know. We're just going to go ahead and unscrew this. Because again, they said use that uh, use that proprietary, uh, not proprietary, but use a USB. So we've taken that battery out. We've taken this cap off. And inside here, look what we have. We have a standard battery, a Tiger Pal battery, which is rated for, it's rated for 800 milliamp an hour. Well, guess what? I have a, a battery with the same connection that's rated for 700 milliamp an hour, bamzo, uh, with the same connection. So hypothetically, we can uh, just go ahead and plug this in. I don't know if this one has any juice left, but bamzo, there we go. You see here? We got lights. We'll try to focus down there. We got lights. We can go fly it. Obviously, we need to charge this. This battery will fit in this battery bay. You need to do it above the wire, though. Bamzo, it'll go in the battery bay. We can close it, or we don't even need to put on the door because, say, we got more batteries. Um, we got more batteries with the same connection type. We can swap and pop, unlike before where we thought we couldn't swap and pop. So uh, this was just really quick fix for you guys. I think we're gonna go out and fly it now. All right, bright sunshiny day. We are bam right next to the solar panel that charged this drone's battery. It's the same exact battery. You can get a B6 balance charger, which is actually suggested, and charge it like this instead of USB. Um, now, the way that I'm doing it, as you can see here, we're charging a little bit higher than we should have. We should only be at 0.8, but we're charging at 1 amp. It's at 3.92 volts. It will read 4.2 fully charged. Um, we've only been at it for 7 minutes and 44 seconds, but my setup here is solar. Um, and even with no amps coming in because you can see my solar panel there the sun hasn't actually came over the building and is, isn't hitting it we're really not creating that much of a draw because you can see it's saying steady at 12.3 and that's also with a little led light running on it silhouette to it and we will start a screen recording for you guys in three two one we will click stream and it is looking at Is looking at the wood there but we're going to go ahead and just have it look at the wood some more and we're going to put this on here and I'm going to stand like this and we could do an auto takeoff or you could just press up now as you could see from in the drone room we did take off the prop guards I'm getting attacked by bugs over here excuse me um, like horribly that's terrible all right, so we're going to go ahead and put it up here. I might actually move up because uh, I'm closer to the water standing over there. But uh, we are doing a screen recording. My FPV footage is clean all the way up there. It's not breaking up or anything, which is uh, pretty good. We're going to go ahead and just lift up a little bit higher. Some nice images up there. And it is trimmed forward considerably. I'm getting attacked by gnats here, man. So trick to uh, not get attacked by gnats when you're flying is bring your drone down, fly it around your face. And hopefully the gnats get chewed up a little bit. We're gonna go up even further here. Um, I don't like gnats in my face because if they're in my face, they generally go in my eyes. Dude, we're in the lowest speed setting. This thing has nice pitch for the lowest speed setting. We're going to put it in medium. These gnats are terrible. Might even get on the pavement over here. 
but connectivity from the drone to the app seems pretty good. Um, there's a little look at your yaw rate. Bringing this back over. And let's try to trim this out. There. I have it, for the most part, trimmed out where it's no longer heavy pitching forward. It seems to still be going... No, that seems pretty good. So let's go ahead and bring this over here. Just really trying to chop up some of these gnats. All right, we're gonna go ahead and throw it in the highest speed setting. Highest speed setting, we have crazy pitch. Like this thing, I didn't realize how much of a sport flyer this was. I'm gonna go ahead and rise up here just to get a little video. It's decent height of it too. Clearly there is no image stabilization on this. That should provide some decent flight footage up there of a little town. I can't believe how much this rips around, man. The third speed set, and this is definitely a ripper. And it's brush motors, too. Maybe it's because I always had those uh, prop guards on. And underneath, we see the red and the white. That'll be an indication for your LVC. Once those start blinking, you know you're about done. A little look at the yaws that you could uh, get with this. I bet this can lift a Mobius or a Q6. I would bet money this could. And if you guys don't know what a Mobius or a Q6 is, it is a standalone 1080p camera. And right now on, uh, on the FPV, I see lines in the footage. That's just the sun being over top of the blades and casting a shadow on it. As we turn this way, you no longer see that. And we'll go ahead and go up again. Just trying to blow the bugs away from my face. Still have control of the quadcopter. Still have control of it. And right now, I'm going to bring it down because our FPV has cut out. Okay, controls are getting a little bit choppy now. I think I've got my FPV back. Yeah, I did get my FPV back, so it'll definitely reconnect if uh, you lose connection as long as you bring it back down and get it closer to yourself. And a screen recording is basically, my gosh, these bugs are killing me. Let's, let's see if they're any better out here. Um, the screen recording is basically going to provide to you what, uh, no, they're no better. My gosh, dude. Um, what saving to the cell phone would be, because it's all Wi-Fi. Chop them up, chop them up. They're terrible out today. I mean, it's, it's not even noon, so maybe that's, uh, the issue. I don't know. Again, I'm thoroughly impressed by the speed rates on this. I don't ever remember it being this quick. And again, we are using the same battery. Try to go over this way. Let's try to get a look at it, a little look at it. Definitely a fun sport flyer, man. Again, I was maybe it was those prop guards, those large prop guards that really limited the flyability on us. We'll go ahead and 
Maybe take it up this way. Just to get a little shot. Not really picking up too much over there. Go ahead and bring it down. This is an altitude hold drone. So it takes a little bit of time to come down, but not too much. We've seen altitude hold drones that take a long time coming down. And this is an older drone. I believe Walmart still sells these. Um, Toys R Us sell, sold these, but as you guys know, Toys R Us is no more. Although, they're supposed to make a comeback. Um, this is a really good entry-level flyer. Uh, I always tote the CMX 5Cs and the seam line is entry level flyers. This is too. I mean, you're gonna, because you're buying it from Walmart, you're going to pay a little bit more than you would if you were to buy a SEMA from a Chinese site or even uh, if you could find a deal on eBay um, for one. But if you got to have a drone and you got to fly, this will do it. This, uh, again, really surprised at that pitch rate because even in the first speed center there, I think it's auto landing. Yeah, it auto lands itself, so that's good to know. Once your LVC kicks, it auto lands. We're going to go ahead and uh, just stop the screen recording. My blades are still spinning, though. Right here. I'm trying to stop my screen recording. Hmm. Definitely want to stop that screen recording for you guys. There we go. Screen recording has been stopped. And let's see. Yep, we got blinkies underneath. And towards the end, that was a really aggressive flight. Um, but all in all, very impressed by it. Um, again, I've had this for a while, so this isn't new to me. But having the prop guards off of it is new to me. Um, going to the drone and checking to make sure if it would have power. And it didn't was new to me. And then showing you how to do that. A way to prevent that from happening. Is this J drone here. What's going on, guys? So you got your sharper image DX4. You want to go fly it. You uh, go around back and you turn it on, and we don't get any lights. That's no good. What do we do? As you can see right here, this little warning only use provided USB cable for charging. Which to me, that's uh, right here. That's where you would charge it. That's like a. Hey, that lets me know there's a proprietary battery in here. How am I going to fly this? Do we throw it away? No, don't throw it away. Get yourself a small screwdriver. We'll try to focus here. Um, and then there's a little screw here. Check this out. I'm going to show you what they don't want you to know. We're just going to go ahead and unscrew this. Because, again, they said use that uh, use that proprietary, uh, not proprietary, but use a USB. So we've taken that battery out. We've taken this cap off. And inside here, look what we have. We have a standard battery, a Tiger Pal battery, which is rated for, it's rated for 800 milliamp an hour. Well, guess what? I have a, a battery with the same connection that's rated for 700 milliamp an hour 
Amzo uh, with the same connection. So hypothetically, we can uh, just go ahead and plug this in. I don't know if this one has any juice left, but Bamzo, there we go. You see here, we got lights. We'll try to focus down there. We got lights, we can go fly it. Obviously we need to charge this. This battery will fit in this battery bay. You need to do it above the wire though. Bamzo, it'll go in the battery bay, we can close it. Or we don't even need to put on the door because say we got more batteries. Um, we got more batteries with the same connection type. We can swap and pop, unlike before where we thought we couldn't swap and pop. So uh, this was just really quick fix for you guys. I think we're gonna go out and fly it now. Connect this. Um, your little, your little, your little battery bay cover and your your screw here. Once you're done flying, you need to disconnect that because that's why that battery drained. Even though it was off. It is still taking a draw. It's taking a very minimal draw and it will continue to draw because that connection is being made. If it's off like that, and even if you want to put the screw back in, even if you want to put the put the battery cover back on, leave it off like that until you fly it next. Unless you fly this once a week, then you don't have to worry about that. Um, but alright guys, I'm Jay Drum. If you haven't subscribed, smash the subscribe button. DX4 from Sharper Image. Later.